Thank you. Uh, well, welcome everyone to jo for joining to my master thesis presentation titled The Description and Quantification of the Deep Sea Megaventic Communities in Ormonde Seamount, Northeast Atlantic, using video analysis. So the content will be divided into four main sections, introduction and aims, materials and methods, results and discussion, and conclusions. So we begin by plunging into the deep sea, which is the largest environment on Earth. Yet, uh, yet only around 0.01% has been sampled and studied in detail. And this is mainly because of the exploration capabilities are limited. Uh, the cost to get to sample these remote places is really high. And also the technology needed is quite uh, unique. Uh, so the seafloor is full of different habitats and different topographical features. And one of them are the seamounts, which are elevations higher than 1,000 meters from the seafloor without reaching the surface, because otherwise they would be islands. Uh, so the best estimates calculate around 33,452 seamounts worldwide. And these are very interesting because they possess unique characteristics, such as their interaction with ocean circulation, which promotes venti communities. Uh, mainly by sponges and corals, which are ecosystem engineers. Uh, so they attract, uh, for example, crustaceans, uh, nidarian, uh, sorry, uh, crustaceans, echinoderms, and fish. And some of these are considered as vulnerable marine ecosystems, which is a term uh, defining uh, rare and endemic or endangered uh, fauna vulnerable to human activities. So the importance of VMEs relies on that they increase the abundance, the biomass, the richness, the diversity, and the functioning of the ecosystems. Uh, so the United Nations General Assembly calls states to take immediate actions to reduce impacts, and some of these actions are, uh, are mapping or assessing the conservation status, and that is the case of the ISIS uh, web uh, tool, that they have this, this map that you see on screen, in which white dots are VMEs, However, as you can see, there are so many places poorly explored, and that is the case of Ormond the Seamount. However, uh, because of this expedition, it was already included, and it's right here. And yeah, so the aims of this master thesis are to describe, characterize, and quantify for the first time the deep sea megaventic communities at Ormond the Seamount, Northeast Atlantic, to assess the influence of environmental variables such as water masses, substrate type, and the distribution patterns of different taxa and to study the variability in taxa composition among depths and flanks of the seamount. So materials and methods. The location uh, it will, is located on the uh, Gorringe Bank that has two peaks, the Jettysburg and Ormonde. The Gorringe Bank is located 190 kilometers southwest uh, the coast of Portugal and is at the pathway of the Mediterranean outflow water that forms this salty tongue that you can see on the right. So the main water masses that influence uh, Ormonde are the North Atlantic central water down to around 600 meters. And then below the Mo, the Mediterranean outflow water uh, down to 1,250 meters. And then below the North Atlantic deep water. If we see the salinity and the soft oxygen profile, it is really easy to differentiate among them because the salinity is really high with values above 36. And the dissolved oxygen is poor with values below four milliliters per liter. Uh, the data was acquired during the MedWaves expedition in 2016 on board of the research vessel Sarmiento de Gamboa using a remote operate, operated vehicle, uh, Liropus 2000, that was equipped uh, with uh, photo and video cameras and on the water positioning system, some arms to take uh, physical samples and also a, a pair of lasers 10 centimeters apart that were used as a scale. Uh, four different dives were analyzed for this thesis, in which the deepest one is dive three. Uh, sorry, you can see here on the screen. And it was performed at 1,960 meters depth. And the other three dives were in a range of 1,200 and 700 meters. Uh, so the video processing consisted in three main steps. Uh, the first one was the creation of catalogs. So I created one catalog for substrates in which I considered uh, soft substrates, mud, sand, and detritic, and as hard substrate, pebbles, flagstone, and rock. And for fauna, uh, I, together with the help of uh, scientists and experts, identify organisms to the lowest taxonomical level possible. However, many times it wasn't possible because it, it is really hard to to identify them through remote means. So a morph species name was given, and this is a concept uh, usually uh, used because of uh, this difficulty. Uh, so the second step was the selection of useful sequences. 
those were the ones where the ROV was traveling in a linear direction um, with a constant speed of 0.3 to 0.4 knots. The lasers were visible on screen and I have on the screen at least one meter width, which was my transect width. Uh, the third step was the annotation process. Uh, I, it was different for substrate than for fauna. For substrate, I considered the whole frame and for fauna, only individuals bigger than five centimeters that fell inside my one meter transect. For this, I used uh, OFOP software. And the data, the data analysis, uh, I did a description of the communities. I calculated densities. Uh, I studied the community structure using ordination methods like non-metric multidimensional scaling and simple. And I studied the variation among sites using a beta diversity analysis that compose into its two main components, which are nestedness, that basically implies that you have a richer sites that uh, the other site, sites have subsets of species of this one. And uh, spatial turnover is the other component or replacement also called. And this basically implies that you have some species that are replacing for others in the different sites. And what happens in nature usually is a, a mixture of both. Uh, results and discussion. So in terms of number of morph species uh, in the Mediterranean outflow water, there was the highest, uh, higher richness of poriferans, and in the North Atlantic deep water, there was a higher richness of nidarians and echinoderms. Uh, the fauna density and its distribution along the, the dive profile followed by the ROV is visible on these plots. So these, these plots in this row uh, indicate the the distance traveled by the ROV on the x-axis and in the y-axis, the, the depth. And dark colors are hard substrates and light colors are soft substrates. So these uh, plots indicate the density along as well the distance traveled by the ROV. So if we analyze them together, we can see major trends like the abundance and high representation of poriferans on hard substrates in the dives performed in the Mediterranean outflow water. While well, for the Nidarians, they were more present on soft substrates in both water masses, the North Atlantic deep water and the Moe. Uh, the community structure, uh, I, I constructed this NDMS under a stress value of 0 0.075. The three of them uh, is the same arrange, just in the two up here are the environmental variables fitted. The, uh, the one on the top left is the for substrates, uh, hard color, uh, sorry, dark colors are hard substrates and lighter colors are soft sub substrates. And this is for water masses. Uh, light blue is the uh, North Atlantic deep water. And this one uh, is an overlay of the name of the species and the groups identified by SIMPROOF and also visible in the NDMS. So I'm gonna zoom in this one to show you the main groups uh, formed. So group one was mainly formed by species in the Mediterranean outflow water on rocky substrates and only sponges. And group two was uh, the only one in the North Atlantic deep water uh, by Nidarians uh, on soft substrates. And group three on soft substrates as well, but in the Mediterranean, in the Mo. And group uh, four in the Mo as well, but on mixed substrates. Uh, this is a general overview of how does it look, uh, the seamount and the distribution of fauna that we found? Uh, gray areas, uh, is we don't know what is there. Th those areas were not sampled in this uh, study. It's not that there is nothing there. We don't know what is there. Uh, but we can see a trend here that uh, sponges are in the Mediterranean outflow water and similar findings have been reported for the uh, peak of the seamount and also has been suggested as a hotspot of preference and similar findings uh, we are reporting here. And uh, the, their presence here in this water mass could be related to the amount of silicates in the MO because it's higher than in Atlantic waters. And this is a really important compound for sponges because they build their skeleton with this material. And also they dissolve oxygen because it's low in the MO and this uh, limits the, list the distribution of cold water corals. Uh, however, this ha has to be addressed uh, with caution because uh, there have been some reports of cold water corals growing under hypoxic conditions in the coast of Africa. And yeah, it wasn't fully tested here. It's just uh, uh, an approach for, for the discussion. Um, some species that we are seeing here, like the basket sponge, Peronoma carpenteri, uh, is also being documented for other uh, locations in the North Atlantic, like far north, uh, close to Ireland in Porcupine. 
and also for the Galicia Bank and more south to the Canary Islands in the same water mass always. And on the other hand, the Nidarian uh, Acanella arbuscula, which is this bamboo coral, uh, was also documented for deeper areas in the North uh, Atlantic deep water for other locations, uh, like in the whole uh, North Atlantic. So this is consistent with our findings. Uh, in terms of the beta diversity, had a total value of 0.78 out of the maximum one, which is uh, really high, with a dominance of the turnover component of 0.65. Uh, this means that uh, the structure of the community is different among the different sites. So I did a pairwise comparison between uh, all of the dives to um, investigate which had the highest value, and the highest value was found between the deepest dive and the shallowest one, which was yeah, was kind of expected, but the dominance turnover is really high, like 0.93, which means that communities are almost uh, completely different. And the lowest value was found between dives performed at the same uh, bathymetrical range, however, uh, at different flanks, and this could uh, be related to the dominance as well of the turnover component. Uh, similar findings ha have been reported for other seamounts, in which uh, the turnover or replacement component is also dominant and the, the whole region has a high beta diversity value. Um, and as conclusions, uh, Ormonde has shown to be a hotspot of sponges in terms of abundance and diversity. The Mediterranean outflow water on rocky substrates appear to favor proliferance over Nidarians in general, and sponges display much higher densities than cold water corals. And there is a strong turnover in species composition along the bathymetrical range. And the identification of BMEs is paramount to better plan and manage conservation efforts in the deep sea. And I want to highlight here that, uh, for instance, for some uh, glass sponges that were identified as well for this uh, master thesis for this location, uh, they have really long lifespans, uh, like some of them in uh, about hundreds of years, and there is one record of one 11,000 of, year, of years. So the recovery of these places after some damage is almost uh, impossible in our time frame or time understanding. So uh, I think we need to um, target the, the conservation of these places uh, with the precautionary simple uh, principle approach, and I mean protect them before they are gone. Uh, as a future research, uh, there are still a, a lot of knowledge gaps, like the bathymetric range and the flanks that we did not sample, and the species identification uh, will improve in, in in the future. And with this, more uh, we, we will have more information, so habitat suitability models could be created, so we have a better view and perspective of how the distribution of, of habitats uh, along the seamount, uh, so better management decisions could be taken. Also, it is really interesting to do a comparison with other locations to study their connectivity and also the influence of water masses and how these habitats may react to future climate change scenarios. And also the role of water masses and their interface. It's in, it has been hypothesized uh, by Mosquera Jimenez that the interface of water masses create internal waves and modify them, which uh, is beneficial for uh, benthic filter feedings like sponges and corals, so similar trends could be happening here and we have to further investigate this. Uh, well, uh, that was all. Thank you all for joining and for listening. I want to acknowledge my supervisors, Kova and Patry, who worked great uh, during this time, my co-supervisors, Marina and Jaisel, and also all the researchers who helped me with the species identification and with the art coding. And of course, I'm Bercy, uh, the Spanish Institute of Oceanography, the European Union, Ghent University, and Atlas Project for making uh, this uh, project possible. Um, uh, I'd like to hear uh, further questions from you.